So, Chris, buying that van off that chap, I think, paid dividends, mate, didn't you? Because he's been on the phone, guys. Definitely. Welcome back to the channel and a new video. We have bought another van off that same guy. And guess what? Same issue. It's an on-runner. Yep. He said that the piston was cracked on it. We don't know exactly. I mean, they've not had the head off, so how they found that out, I'm not quite sure. But they've obviously done some diagnostics to it. I've had the bonnet up. There's a couple of pipes been removed. But this has belonged to this company from new. And they, basically, they can't have vans off the road, so they bought a new one. They've yeah. replaced it. Obviously, must have spent a few quid on it before, but it's nice miles, done less than 100. Is it long wheel? It is long wheelbase. Oh, I don't think that's a long... I think that's a medium wheelbase. It's certainly a high top, isn't it? Yeah. Or maybe even a medium top. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. But quite nice. Got a couple of little dings around it. Let's have a little walk around it, Chris. Very, very common to yeah. be missing Flat. on transits across the years. Not just this shape. All of them had this issue. I noticed it has got a couple yeah. of little dings it's not in me it. It's not many. There's one there, isn't there? Back doors are very straight, aren't they? They are very, very straight. Chris, that is big. That ain't going in that workshop, I don't think. I don't think. think it is, no. We might have to let the tyres down. That's the highest one we've had. And then this side, all very, very nice. A little bit up there. Is there? Oh, yeah, I see it, yeah. yeah. Do you want to grab the key and we will open the bonnet because yeah, yeah, you need the key sure. for it? I'll just briefly show you guys inside there. It is a bit of a mess. Well, a but bit nice. dirty, but yeah. not dog to death, no, is no, it? No, it's nice. There's no holes in the floor and there's no rips in the seats. But I noticed, Chris, when I lifted up here, see the pipe off down there from oh, the yeah. turbo? Yeah, yeah. And look at the state of it. It is quite mucky. So, same engine Ranger. as the Ford Ranger. So you know yeah. where we're going with this one, don't you? Yeah. And that was an injector fault caused uh, the bore. Yeah. yeah. Bore, bore wash, bore wash. It? Yeah, yeah. And actually melted the piston. Yeah. So of course this is gonna have to go probably to Phoenix. Yep. And do an exchange unit. Yep. But that's not as old as the engine, so obviously it's had quite a few bits changed in its life. I guess you don't know the history of it. It didn't come with a history book. All we got with it was a V5, but it made light work of it pulling it in oh, yeah. with the new toy. Definitely, but it's pushing, doesn't it? You checking the... Yeah. We're not even going to try and turn this over. No. Look at the oil, Chris. Well, there isn't any, It hasn't there? got any. No coolant either. No coolant, no oil, yeah, so... Mind you, I think we drop drop the hose off. What are we going to do? Try and pull it in the I think doorway. it's probably best out. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, drop, we'll drop any coolant out the rad out here. So we'll pull a bottom hose off if in case there is some in it. And then once that's drained off, I think we get the nose of it in there. Probably want to get the engine lift in first. Yeah. And then... Um, and my Harley. <laughs> that in the rain. Yeah, we'll get yeah. that in. Yeah. And then I guess... Yeah, whole front panel comes whole up. Front we'll have the whole front Yeah, end bonnet off. off, front panel out, rad pack out, bumper off. Let's get on with it. Yeah. I had to slip off there. Actually, Chris dropped me off at the train stage. I went home, he come back later and got me, but while I was gone, he cracked on and got everything stripped out the way there to make plenty more room to get this engine out. And it was actually very, very straightforward. Once you'd removed the bumper and the headlight, you had like two down here, one up here under the, behind the headlight panel, same the other side, just random few nuts and bolts, and that whole front section was removed. We'll probably remove this cross member now and the intercooler and then that'll just give us even more room around the engine. But yeah, not a great deal you can show. It was nuts and bolts to remove everything out of the way and now we're just going to move on, start undoing the wiring harness on it, the fuel pipes, etc, etc and just crack on with it. But certainly a lot more room in there now guys, I think you would agree. Let's get straight on with it.
moving along very very nicely there what we've decided to do i don't think we've actually had one of these out of one of these transits the nearest we got was the ford ranger which of course was similar but they are fitted differently we're going to actually remove that cradle allow us to lower the engine down and get to the bell housing bolts right around the back of the engine here on the gearbox so removing all that front end definitely made sense including the crash bar the, the front reinforcer and of course that lower oh do you know what it's gone out my head there cradle removing that lower cradle it just creates so much more room and makes your life that much more easy there was quite a lot of oil in the intercooler um no water we managed to drain that out first but you can see there's a little bit of water coming out of that pipe but the very interesting bit what chris found was he removed the air box and this is what was inside guys it is absolutely sogging wet now is that down to the fact that this van has been sat around for a while when rain's got in there or has this van sucked up water at some point and it's actually flood damaged like the engine sucked up water and it's ruined it anyway we'll be uh we'll be finding out once it's out and the head's removed exactly what is inside there I can actually feel a little bit of spitting, so I think we've done this just in time. But a couple of uh, couple of bits to note. Chris noticed there was a couple of bell housing bolts missing, and I noticed that all of the bell housing bolts are actually marked up. So this ain't the first engine this has had, or yeah, certainly not the first time it's been out, that's for sure. Uh, we think we've got all the bolts, they are quite awkward to get to the top ones around the bell housing so we've had to lower the engine a little bit but there may still be one or two little pieces connected up but we're going to go for it i think and try and pull it out and i know you guys said you enjoyed the live bit last time where we pulled it out so you ready mate yeah i think so Are you uh, going just, underneath or? just i don't think we need to just a little so bit of, just give it up a on here and then a bit of rocking Hold it there. Well, right, I don't think we've missed any because it's no. moved forward, hasn't it? It may have, yeah, it may have missed the odd bit. But yeah, I think we probably need to lift it up a bit, Rob. It's quite angled on the gearbox bell housing. There is a loom here, mate, I need to disconnect. All right. Do you want the light? No, I'm good. Right, that's one. I can see another one here though, and it doesn't look like, ah, oh, there it is. I'm forgetting I've got my mic on, everyone can hear me here, can't they? Doesn't matter, does it? Right, there is a loom here, connected, Chris. Is there? Yeah, a little loom. Is that easy to get off there, what, can you see that? You want the trim clip remover. Up, up the top there, your side, can you see that? Is that easy to come off? Or is there a lot there? Uh, no, well, it's all part main engine loom, that one. Yeah, it goes round here, then goes right down the back of the gearbox, so. It must be a plug somewhere, I would think. Yeah, I can see it, I think. No, I'm not gonna be able to get to it. No? No, it goes right up over the gearbox the other side. Pull on it again, make sure it's a... Yeah, you can come out a little bit now. No, if no, you I mean, want. pull on the loom. Oh, make sorry, sure. mate. Is it that one? Yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, so that's all part of the injector harness, the right. whole engine loom. Okay, so there is just one. It's got to be... Uh... It goes up over the gearbox to the other side. Yeah, about... and there's multiple plugs the other side right, let me come around there shall and we, undo it shall we cut the camera or no we can just cut a bit out of it yeah, so that's right. fine see them there great yep. ones from where am i coming under under here yeah behind the um suspension subframe i'd say yeah right it's that one there chris it's 
coming up over the top yeah, or is so there multiple? Yeah, there's, oh, there's a trim clip remover there if you need it. There's four plugs there. You probably have to cut it, Rob, because... Uh, I'm huffing and puffing. No, it's probably <laughs> looking at my backside, bent over, but there ain't nothing I can do there. Right. I might have to leave that from your side. Is that I'm, a I'm, earth as well I'm, on the 10mm? I'm looking, and yes. And do you know what? Separate load. That's the piece of wire that I need out. It is, if you can chuck me a 10mm, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you want the trim clip? Thank you. You just want a little 10, don't you? Yes, please. Def definitely, everything here has been undone before, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Oh, well, gee, I wonder if they split the um, exhaust from the turbo in a different place. Exhaust. Yeah, because that was hard, wasn't it? Because they, they didn't feel like they'd ever been out, to be honest. But you never know. They do get hot, don't they? Yeah. Today. Right, I think now I'm going to go over the other side and pull. Where was it? That's it, there, isn't it? Right, well done, mate. All right. Yeah, let's come out. <laughs> we might have to just put a bit of plate down here for that um, engine lift, to be honest. I've left this rolling, haven't yeah, I? So I can just cut, cut, cut that piece out of me huffing and puffing underneath. All right? Yeah. Pull that down. Ready? Oh, can you? Oh, you can't go up anymore, can you? A little bit. That's yes, it. You, you got it. Right, let's get this jack out of the way, mate. One All sec. Right. Well, I think we're probably as far as we want to come at the moment. Well, I'm just going to see if there's anything still connected. Should we? Uh... That's the wire that was caught over the top of the gearbox. Yeah. Right. I think that's everything, isn't we'll it? We'll just lower it down a bit and then you can cut, well, you take the camera off the stand if you want. Yeah, everything's off. We're probably at that stage where we um, want to roll the van back. Get just it out a of our bit. way, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think we're going to take it too far, are we? No. But we, we could do, do you reckon we push that by hand? Yeah, we'll cut that and we get the van out of the way and then we can show the engine. Yeah. So as usual, like all of them guys, a quick check using car vertical. So 11th, 2015, that one. Ownership change, 2017. MOTs and some service history there. And to the stolen vehicle check, this check was formed in the United Kingdom, Romania, Canada, Czech Republic, just to name a few. And then a little bit further down, we got our handy mileage graph there. And you can see on the last MOT, which was on the 1st, 2021, it had done 95,000 miles. This van has been off the road quite some time. Of course, the MOT expired on it in January 2022, so over a year ago. A little bit further into the check, you got some valuations there. And right down the very bottom of the check, you got your recalls there if it's got any, and your nine helpful tips and tricks of things to check when you're purchasing your vehicle. And don't forget, guys, when doing your check, on the front page of Car Vertical, you are looking for everything to be green. If there is any issues, it will be clearly highlighted in amber. So here's an example. Mileage okay, theft okay, accidents there, clearly highlighted in amber. I want to thank Car Vertical once again for the continued support on the channel. To benefit from a discount off your check, use the link in the description or the code SR10 from any browser.
pretty big lump, mate. Yep. But it's out. And what Chris was just saying, that none of this just looks, none of it looks really old, does it? It's definitely not original. No. So it might have been split before for the for a clutch replacement. Yeah. Quite possibly. But now it's a process, isn't it, of stripping this down as far as we can before yeah. it goes to his Phoenix, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Phoenix Engineering. Adam. So, but we was just discussing there, wasn't we, that they going to time the pump and change the injector pump from this engine to the replacement engine. Yeah. So we're leaving that in place, aren't we? Which means you'll have to start there while they pull the head off just to see what's wrong with this one, probably. Yeah. Because we would like to know, wouldn't we? But there you go. So I'd like to see that cracked piston that it's got, but you, you just, I don't know how they work that out, but. Well, diesel wash, isn't it? Yeah. It happens in lorries, it used to happen in lorries a lot. Um, because it, it can't go anywhere, so but it looks almost like a blowtorch has been at it in a lorry. Eats away the piston, but we, that's down to a, a faulty injector. But we don't know if it's sucked up water. Do no, we? we don't. Um, to be fair, we know nothing I, about it. I think it. Adam's dad mentioned that a lot of the times it's due to turbo failure. You keep running it, and that's what what causes it. So, um, but. He's a wealth of knowledge, isn't he? And he, he only is, has to yeah. look at it. And he says, yeah, that's what's happened on this one. Make sure you change number two injector, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So um, we leave it to the experts, I think. Absolutely. But we have got to strip this off. Oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll actually, we'll be taking it out there, like Chris just said, with the injectors in it and the injector the pump. Bear. The bare engine. But yeah. all of this, EGR system, Start motor, pipe work, clutch, fly clutch wheel, flywheel, engine mounts, the whole lot comes oil off. Oil cooler, it's all yeah. got to come off, yeah. hasn't it? It's probably worth saying, a hell of a lot easier than removing it from a right same engine. Oh yeah, from the Ranger. You guys, you can see how much room is in there now. And those rear bell housing ones. Yeah. Well, I'm removing that that cradle. And that allowed us to lower the engine slightly, which, which allowed us to get to it at the back. Still a bit tricky, but not, not too bad. No. Not too bad. I think this has been sitting for quite a while, though. So yeah. I, I would actually think as well that there is a possibility if that air filter was loose, it is rainwater, because yeah. that's rainwater's got in there. Yeah, true. And you can see they had the same markings on that bell housing bolt there. But I guess we didn't even turn this over, so we don't even know if it's locked up. But no. we're going to have a bit of lunch and then crack straight on with getting that one that's completely it. stripped. As usual, I just had to pop out, do another chore, and left Chris to do this. And, uh, well, to say he made light work of it, you see from the time lapse. And he's, because this could be got, I'm actually going to take this now. As soon as we finished, well, I'm going to drop this off. It was going to be Monday, but it's going now. And Chris said it could be out for a little while, Rob. We could be waiting a little while. We don't know. So what he's actually done, it's just, really very very helpful and if you're stripping an engine i'd recommend doing this so there is everything off the back of the engine there is everything off the left side of the engine in one box there is everything off the right side so when the new engine oh and the sorry front and, the front. and there's everything off the front so ultimately when the new engine comes in you'll park it there put the boxes in the same place get your new gaskets out and crack straight on rebuilding it so I'm going to let Chris finish taking these last few little tiny bits off. We'll get this in the back of the van and we'll get it over to Phoenix Engineering. And hopefully, well, they're not going to swap it out today, but we'll get this one dropped there. They'll get all the diesel pump and gear swapped over. What they did, I don't know how many of you watched the last video, but 
they have to actually stick they stick a new timing chain kit on them but they use our diesel pump and it has to be timed why it's on there so we'll take it as a unit like this and let them do the swapping over really they've got all of the tools to do the timing chains where they're doing them day in day out and we haven't got the tool for it so you're better off leaving it like chris said earlier to the professionals guys i've just arrived and managed to get a parking space today and as fast as the guys could get it out of the back of the van the like adam's obviously said to his guy start stripping it Adam, you're going to while me waiting, yeah. really, so that we can finish this video. You're just going to quickly whip that head off for me. and Yeah, to see if there's any damage from like overfueling or anything like that. And then um, we'll know if we need injectors as well, because yeah. I think last time we needed one, didn't we? But I guess I'll just wait around, let you guys get that stripped, and then we'll have a quick look inside. If it's what I've been told, we never see the inside of this. We bought it as an on runner. We was told it had a cracked piston. I don't know if they've done sort of leak, some sort of leak down test on it or what, but um, I guess we'll know, won't we, in a minute? To be honest with you, when they crack, they chuck out a lot of oil, as I can see here. It's quite oily. So there's a good chance that could have happened. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and on the exhaust side, that one looks quite dry. Yeah. That's how it should look. And then towards the back, it's more oily. Yeah. Obviously, I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We have to have a look and see. Yeah, we'll let you get that off and um, yeah, we'll have a look. Guys, if you haven't seen us do this video down here, there is a link, there'll be a link in the description where we actually watched Adam's dad. I mean, what he don't know about engines, I suppose is not worth knowing, but he's got all the machines here and he machines the cranks, yeah. polishes them, etc., etc. And they even do a service where you, your van gets brought here, non-running, and they actually get it, put a new engine in it and get it running. There he is there. The man that knows it all. <laughs> very, very, very clever man and very interesting to listen to. Anyway, I'll cut there and let him get this head off. You Can't beat that, guys. They just said to me, are you ready? That's literally just taking that chat about six minutes <laughs> to actually strip that whole engine. They're just going to remove the bolts and we're all going to see it together. Yeah, number four's got a hole in it. Has it? Yeah. Off. Four? Yeah. Let's have a look at the head That's first fine. while Adam's getting that off. Is there a mark? Right. Oh, the pistons hit it. Yeah. So it's a how obvious, Adam, or? Yeah, that's a fit. Turn it up so it comes up. Where am I looking, bud? Um, on that let side, let me spin it. He's just going to bring this piston up to top dead centre and when then we'll be able it, to see can, it. Uh, that was a good clear. shout though, the guy I got it from, turned up the piston out of wasn't it? There. Oh, you got it? Yeah, yeah. You're quicker than me. <laughs> He's very quick, Adam, isn't he? Look there, can you see it? No. Let me get some of the oil wet. Get a torch. Oh, through. I can see can it. See yeah, it? get a, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me get a torch. So, through. boss, I'll just see you walked over. That means number four injector. Is no good no. because it's over petrol, uh, Adam. Could you give your dad that mic for a yeah. sec? Sorry, don't make his it's all right, he'll be able to hear you. So, that in that injector, yeah, that number four injector is too much uh, diesel in there, too yeah. much fire, and they blow up the piston, blown up the that's piston. The, yeah, that's the reason, yeah. guys. I hope you can all see that that yeah. hole in the piston there, unbelievable. Yeah. When I bought this van, the yeah. chap said it's got a cracked piston, so they must have done some sort of leak down test to know. Yeah, because and the ceiling, that one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it because it could be the checking up the compression and losing this one. Yeah. And that's why it's uh, telling you to, you got a problem to piston. With, with the injector. Yeah. But this is not so bad, is it? It's not as bad as having the crank all knackered. No, and... no. This one is a, is too much pressure inside the system. Could be don't done nothing. Is it when you pull the dipstick out? Yeah. Is it steaming out? Like, I don't know. I, I never run it because 
they said it was knackered and I thought there's no point me trying to run it. Because he didn't know it, that what happened. Yeah, they, they told me that it yeah. had a cracked piston, which is incredible, but... The C today is second engine to arm up on up and same problem. Really? Yeah, yeah that, that one that, that one outside. Oh, this transit tipper? Yeah, yeah same tipper. Cylinder as well. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Same. Guys, I am now going to, I've literally just wanted to actually end this video today with knowing what was wrong with this engine. As usual, we're going to leave this with you and then cut sometime next week, we'll come and pick up our new yeah. one. Guys, yeah. there would be a link. And your cylinder head is on this skim now. Oh right, yeah, we will have a look at that. So there's our cylinder head, there's our original one, and you've already got us a new one being skimmed as we speak. There's our new one. Yeah, that's it. That's the one to skimming that. I think you're gonna use it for your. Because I, I told Adam that obviously get us one ready. I'm I'm coming with one. So yeah, it's best thing to do now. You already made a start on it. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So at some point next week, we yeah. can come over and pick up our new engine. Yeah. And we'll that's be... the cylinder head. And right. Uh, that's your block as well. We're going to build up your two other ones. And this is going to be our new block. Yeah. And Adam, is, can you turn the other one uh, uh, other way around for this one? Oh, it's already been all um, honed, honed, yeah, honed out. Honed it is a, is ready to using. Cleaned up. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Guys, I'll, like I said, we have done a video at Phoenix Engineering before, and I'll put a link for it in the description down below. But I will also put these guys' details in the description down below. It must have been over a year ago we had the last yeah. engine done with you guys, and you've actually had people coming all the way from Ireland yeah. to have an engine done by you guys so of course huge shout out to them and like i said their link is in the description you won't get a better service anywhere else and everything is done in-house all the way home there guys and completely forgot to do an outro so as usual we do hope you did enjoy this video if you did hit that thumbs up share on all your social networking sites don't forget like subscribe and share and of course you can follow us on instagram at salvage rebuilds and chris on his own Instagram at Salvage Rebuilds Chris. Guys, what I will say, if you do reach out on Instagram, please always, always include your contact number.